My name is Taryn Johnson and my group and I will be talking about the reproductive process. Hi, my name is Brianna Hernandez and me and my group members decided to do our project on reproduction. Um, my name is Andre Douglas and the topic that my group will be presenting on is reproduction. Hello, my name is Franz Manuel and today we're going to talk about the reproductive system. In the reproductive process, a male sperm and a female egg provide the information required to produce another human being. Conception occurs when these cells join as the egg is fertilized. Pregnancy begins once the fertilized egg implants in the uterus. The embryo grows and becomes surrounded by structures that provide support and nourishment. Eyes, limbs, and organs appear as the embryo develops into a fetus. The fetus grows inside the uterus until pregnancy ends with labor and birth. By then, all the body systems are in place, including the reproductive system, that can one day help produce another human being. Fertilization, a sperm and an egg form a zygote. During sexual intercourse, some sperm ejaculated from the male penis swim up through the female vagina and uterus towards the oocyte, floating in the uterine tubes. The sperm and the egg are gametes. They each contain half the genetic information necessary for reproduction. When sperm cells penetrate and fertilize an egg, the genetic information combines. The 23 chromosomes from the sperm pair with the 23 chromosomes in the egg, forming 46 chromosomes, called the zygote. The zygote starts to divide and multiply. As it travels towards the uterus, it divides and becomes a plastiocyte, which will burrow into the uterine wall. So my group member before me explained the egg to embryo to fetus and fertilization. Now I'm here to talk about zygote to embryo. It starts off with a fertilized egg, or better known as zygote, and it takes five days to travel through the uterine tube to the uterus, and at this point it is then dividing and developing into blastiosis with an inner mass of cells and an outer protective ring. And then the blastiosis then attaches itself to the uterus and then gradually implants itself into the uterine lining. During this implantation, the cells de defenerate further and about 15 days after conception, the cells that form the embryo then turn into, will develop into an embryotic disc. So at this point, the cells will then begin to form support structures, and an example would be the yolk sac, which is on one side of the disc, and the yolk sac um, is a part of the di digestive tract. And then another one is the amnion, which fills with fluid, and it will surround the embryo until it's fully developed. And then the other cells will then initiate the placenta and umbilical cord, which provides nutrients and will then eliminate waste. What well, I'll be focusing on how the embryo is developed into a fetus. First of all, in order for reproduction to fir first occur, the male gamete, which is called a sperm, and the female gamete, which is called an egg, has to fuse together and form what's called a zygote. This zygote is then developed into an embryo. During the embryonic process, the embryo is developed. Within four weeks, it starts to show a distinct head. So within four weeks, the embryo will have distinct features such as a head, tail, and a beating heart. Within another six weeks, it will start to develop other features such as eyes and a vertebrae. And by week 10, this embryo is then developed into what's called a fetus. From week 10 of pregnancy, the fetus grows inside the uterus, fueled by nutrient-rich blood supplied by the umbilical cord. Limbs and facial features take shape. Around week 36, the process of labor begins in a first stage called dilation. Hormones stimulate downward contractions of the uterine wall. The contractions push the head of the fetus against the cervix at the lower end of the uterus. The cervix dilates. In the second stage called expulsion, powerful contractions push the head and the rest of the body through the dilated cervix and out through the vagina and the vulva. The baby is born. 
Further contractions expel the placenta to complete the placental stage. In conclusion, humans must develop male or female gonads to be capable of reproduction.